Carolyn, it's Live Sweat Sparkle here, and today I'm really excited about the episode because it's my first guest, and it's the lovely Chantelle Diashina of Prana Mama. And I've been very excited about this because uh, this is a woman who really has an awful lot of wisdom to offer the world. So I'm really glad that I get to share it with you or share her with you. And as I say, being my first guest, I was a little nervous, but also I am pretty excited about this. I will be leaving all of her information for you because I'm sure after this you'll be wanting to reach out to her. But but please do enjoy it and this episode is called Healing Humanity. Chantel, I'm very excited about this episode today because Chantel's one of my favorite people, a very, very wise soul, and I think uh, she's going to heal the world myself. But anyway, um, uh, welcome, first of all. I'm so Thank excited you. that you're here. Thank you for having me. Oh my goodness. I No, I'm, I'm, the honor is all mine because, I, you know, you know how I feel about you. And I think you're a very wise soul. You're a very calming individual. And I just, uh, you're one of those people that if I ever ask advice of, uh, it just comes from such a wonderful place and it's always so logical. So sometimes maybe logic doesn't happen over here all the time. <laughs> so um, it was a no brainer to have you as my first guest and I'm really excited and happy that you did or that you are. Um, I would love to talk if you want to talk about it you're healing humanity. I don't know if you want to call it program because I know you do meditations on Facebook, which I will give the links of everything afterwards. Um, but tell me about this healing humanity, where it came from, why it's important to you, where you see it going, uh, and over to you. <laughs> uh, well, first of all, the pressure of, that I could actually do this healing of humanity. I mean, I, it's definitely not a one-person job. I'm not feeling a lot of pressure with that. We'll get a few people yeah, involved. Yeah, yeah there you. has to be more people, definitely. Um, well, uh, well, I think, um, honestly, it, it began really as a childhood, um, growing up and understanding the importance of race in this world. And me, um, first of all, according to racial standards, being biracial, having, yeah. um, you know, a white mother uh, and a black father, but I was raised by my white stepfather, so I had two white parents growing up. Okay. But um, my, my experience was different in the sense that I didn't realize that I, that my, my uh, stepfather wasn't my real father until I was nine years old. Oh, okay. So I literally had to be told that that my dad wasn't my real dad. Wow. And um, in the moment, the first thing I only cared about was, can I still call him dad? And does oh. he still love me? Oh. And it wasn't until coming of age of, you know, becoming a teenager, then that, uh, that journey of self-discovery and identity of who you are, and, um, and then seeing how the world sees you and, and categorizes you and understanding how, how important race is supposed to be. Yes. And. Um, I didn't get it. I don't understand. I didn't understand why that was so important and why we categorize people according to the skin color. And yet, I experience certain like racist comments or or um, behaviors. It was hurtful, but at my core, I, I still didn't understand it because mm. um, I I know I'm human. I know you're human, and I know like the skin color thing just didn't make any sense. So. I was always interested in this idea of racism and, and, and um, liked discovering like racist thoughts and why people think this way and, and the trailblazers of who was trying to combat racism and how they went about doing this and about the histories and cultures of all humans. I, I really enjoyed culture and, okay. and um, because I, I really felt like we were just all one big family. Yeah. And so there was always this little idea in the back of my head that I would just like for all of us to be that family that we are. And um, it, it wasn't until, you know, later in my 30s, life goes on and you have some experiences, and I ended up stumbling into my own healing journey. And yoga was a big part of that. And I didn't really knew I had to be healed, but yoga told me I did. Oh, interesting. <laughs> oh, what a great way um, to put it. And so, it, what I found was this incredible, powerful way of living um, that just infiltrated my entire life and, and helped me find ways to heal deep emotional wounds that I didn't even know that I had. Mm. And, and then correct behaviors that were um, happening because of those 
wounds that I didn't even know were connected or mm. um, and, and through that process then come the bigger questions of who am I and why am I here what's my purpose and certainly that yogic path taught me all of that like it, it taught me how to go into those questions and then it also helped me to find those answers and to have some big aha moments yeah. and one moment in particular was when um, everything that I was holding on to, all the pain of all the grudges of anyone that I had ever, in my life that I loved that had caused pain, um, I didn't realize that I had, I was holding on to that pain. And so there was just a, a few days of uh, meditating on forgiveness. And by meditating, not just sitting and meditating, but on every day, I was like, what is this forgiveness? Okay. Every single moment, it was relentless. I was determined to figure out the true meaning of forgiveness. And um, in understanding that, um, I had a big aha moment and um, understanding that forgiveness doesn't mean letting go and saying it, what you did is okay, because that's mm -hmm. what I thought. Like they get away okay. with their behavior. Mm -hmm. What the big aha was, was that no, um, I, I realized that the pain within you is what caused the pain that you caused me. Yes. And so therefore, it doesn't matter if it was me or someone else, you would still be causing that same pain. Mm. And so therefore, I'm giving back the pain that you put on to me that I took on that's, that doesn't belong to me, and I'm giving that to you. Okay. Because that's not mine. Yeah. And I let you go. Mm. I let you go, and I, I hope you do your healing, but that's not my job. Yeah but I'm giving your pain back to you and that's for you to work with and now I'm going to take my pain and work on, you. And work on mine. So it's, a, it's like a, a releasing, a cutting okay. of emotional tie. Like you don't realize that we, through that exchange, you, you there's like a cord of pain that's attaching you to the other person and yeah. you just can't move forward. And you're thinking that by them saying sorry, we'll do the thing, but that's not it. Yeah. It's the fact that um, you've accepted their pain as yours and you've mistaken their pain as yours. Okay. So but anyway, that big aha um, was a thread to every other person in my life that I, I didn't realize I was holding onto aggression and understanding, seeing the pain that they were carrying okay. and why things happened the way that they did and, and how in my own pain I also created hurt and, and pain in others as well, mm -hmm. forgiving myself for that. And in that moment, it was like all of that was gone and with that goes a part of identity because you don't realize how much you um, you internalize that role of having someone so much hurt on you okay. and people doing things so that victimization yeah and so part of that identity is gone yeah there you're no longer the victim right and so in that moment um, there's like this clean slate and yeah. then you realize Oh my gosh! So many other people have had their their hand writing my story. What a great way of putting it. And I didn't even know about it, and I defined myself by all these different authors of my life, my life story. Yeah. And in that moment, recognizing not anymore, it's I choose. It's my life. I'm the author. And and in that realization, I could see that there a lot of deep healing had taken place and I also felt this profound peace like just okay so that moving forward it was like an instant change of of who I was and how I was showing up in the world and my understanding of the world my connection to the world how I see people yeah because um, when people act from pain and you have an, an interaction with them um, you define them by that interaction that's right you you expect them to be in a way and in doing that you are then authoring their story mm -hmm. based on one small context and not understanding why they are the way that they are and so that's where that practice of compassion comes is yeah. understanding there's so many things our bodies are stories of containers oh my goodness or, sorry containers of stories yeah. our bodies are containers of stories yeah. and um, and so while they are containers of stories they can also be turned into containers of experiences which is a different thing yes so uh, most of us live by the stories and we therefore define ourselves by those stories 
as opposed to seeing them as experiences. Mm -hmm. But then, who are you above and beyond those experiences? Okay. Yeah. And Important. understanding that uh, that's what yoga teaches us. We are not this body. I am not this skin color. I am not even this gender. Those are experiences. Mm -hmm. I experience living in this part of the world. I experience being this age. Um, but these things do not ultimately define who I am. Mm -hmm. And so it's getting into the, the true essence, the thing that has no form, that's running behind the scenes, yes. that's seeing through these eyes, listening through these ears, speaking through this mouth, and knowing that even the personality that is Chantel is not who I am, okay. but that is a collection of stories yeah. and experiences and memories and but that can't exist by itself yeah so if anything that can't exist by itself that means that I'm not that wow. I'm what's running the personality and so we as humans need to come to this place where we understand that our personalities are a tool our body is a vehicle okay. if we can use our personalities instead of thinking we are who we think we are yeah but use that as a tool in alignment with this divine energy that's running everything, mm -hmm. that is experiencing everything within us. We can use this personality, the things that would normally be um, troublesome or cause issues, yeah. you know, uh, those stubborn parts of ourselves, that when we're fixed on our personality and ego, that cause problems in the world. Mm -hmm. Those very things, when they are tools used for the divine, can be the very things of the personality that are necessary to help humanity. Yeah. I may be over here running the show and I might be aggressive and I might be a control freak and I'm causing problems in my organization because I do that. Okay. If I'm running from ego, that's, prob that's causing problems. Yes. But if I take that and I humble the ego and I understand that I am not that personality, I'm not the ego, but all those traits can serve something greater. Then I can take those traits and I can apply it over here and say, you know what, in the name of justice, you need me to take control of the situation and you need me to speak truth. You need me to fight for people. So that very same trait over here that was causing problems could actually be used for good. Can be used for good. Okay. And so healing humanity comes from this understanding of who we truly are. Yeah. And it's been a process for me to be able to articulate this to people, okay. and there's also a readiness to it as well. But you know, it started out uh, through many a path of listening to that deep call within. And um, you know, I started out as a school teacher. I still feel like I'm a teacher at heart. Yes. That's what I am. Um, children run. I love children, and to me. We should be doing everything for the sake of children I and agree. thinking about building a better world for children. Yes. Um, but I felt a call, something greater. I didn't know what that was. The healing journey happens. Uh, here I am. I have my own business, and it's a corporate wellness company. And again, it's a, a play on language. But the work that I, I just described to you is what I've been doing. Yes. I've been going into corporate spaces in the name of stress management because mm -hmm. we can all identify with stress. Absolutely. Um, and saying, how can we manage that? And using that as a doorway to understand that there's so much going on within us yeah. that we need to deal with. And there are certain things like yoga is a very secular practice. Mm -hmm. It can fit into anyone's... Um, uh, life and and by yoga I don't necessarily mean the physical practice although that's a doorway too yes the physical practice is is very much the smallest part of, of yoga it will take a whole lifetime and beyond to be able to understand yoga but um, the philosophy the living the psychology all of these things that uh, the wellness like from inside and out yeah. all of it it's helping people get well and understanding that a lot of the things we think is out there is actually within us and um, teaching people these tools to go inward and to start cleaning their own backyards so to speak yeah, or, or okay. healing you know just healing some things um, knowing thyself right and 
Um, so in the name of stress management, that's what I've essentially been doing, and we've been making great impact. You know, um, people's lives have been been impacted greatly, and um, that ripples into their families. That's right. Uh, it ripples into their their coworkers. It changes a little bit of culture and how they see each other. It changes how they support each other because mm -hmm. they realize that everybody has their own thing that we're going through. Um, then you've got mental health, right? Yes. So these are all things that we as humans, regardless of skin color, regardless of religion, regardless of where we are in the world, we are we all are facing these challenges. Yeah. And then you throw in COVID, and you throw in, um, you know, the death of or the the killing of George Floyd, yes. and, and what that brought up. I believe right now we're being called. Uh, to heal and certainly COVID was a, a stage for just taking a pause and and coming back to what's important yes. and health is important yes. that's what COVID was screaming at us yes. our well-being is important and um, maybe simplifying realizing that we don't need as much as as we think we do that's right that's become very apparent right um, the importance of relationships, mm. right? Um, and and so there's that, and then this idea of you know when the murder of George Floyd happened, the amount of people across the world that took to the streets didn't matter if you had black skin, brown skin, it didn't matter. Everybody said this is an injustice. Yes. And there was this deep sense of no more. Like we need to just get this right for once. Can we just get it right? Yes. And I feel that um, we've reached that tipping point where that's a deep desire. And, it, and I think we have a deep desire for peace. I think we have a deep desire for doing life better and for doing right by the planet. I agree. Um, and I think a lot of people are scratching their heads like, but how do we do It seems to have been a call on humanity to come together, to heal, I think to be kinder. Uh, a lot of things have become very apparent. So if you want to continue with that line of thought, if you can, now that yeah, I interrupted yeah, no, you, but uh, no, it, was it was so wonderful. It, yeah, and it's like, how do we do that, right? And I think, um, you know, it's brought up so much uh, emotional stuff for people. People are changing at, a, at a, an incredible rate. Like they're realizing, oh yes. God, my values are changing, or um, I'm changing. I feel different. Something's off, and, and they just kind of feel lost. Um, and this idea of wanting to be connected and, and feel community, and uh, and just do better. It's just, I feel like um, we are all at this point searching for something better. And, you know, this is where I find, uh, like, the mindfulness communities, the communities that promote self-awareness yes. and that, that, uh, that mindful path, is, or the path of wisdom. Yeah, um, you're right. And there's different ways that's expressed in the world, but I feel like those are the, the groups that are leaning into this time right now and are taking that position of leadership because we've done a lot of work already as, as individuals but we were also interested in humanity. Like yes. there's so many people that I know of that truly um, hold the, the, this higher vision of humanity and what we want for everybody and um, how do we achieve that. Mm -hmm. And certainly this idea of race is one that um, needs to be addressed because it's one of the great dividers. Yes. And when you start dismantling that, the rest will trickle into place. It'll be, okay, religion is a division between humanity. Um, sexism, gender, like there's so many things about how we have divided ourselves that are in fact lies mm -hmm. um, and based in a place of fear and, and, and uh, hate and greed too. I mean, our economy is, is centered on greed. That's right. And so we're being called to, to heal ourselves to dive into the things that are really hard, the hard truths that maybe we've been running away from, uh, finding ways to distract ourselves from and to numb ourselves from, that we need to sit in that. And we're, we're being asked to sit in discomfort. 
which is so important. In right, life. and that is something that as humans we just haven't been good at. Yeah. Right, yeah. because to do that takes an incredible amount of humility, and that means that you have to come out of the ego to do that. That's right. And so, when something comes at you, a truth comes at you, um, you know, like race and biases around race and the whole spectrum and I think people are confusing this idea that well I'm not racist because you think of you know something like the KKK or white supremacist or people who actually will murder people because of skin color and you think well I'm not a bad person and I'm not a racist yes. but the idea is that you no know, racism is on a spectrum mm -hmm. and that's one end of the spectrum and it goes all the way down to the other end where it's those microaggressions that are just that are harmful certainly that is more uh, workable in the beginning to try to win people over understand that that um, we for hundreds of years have been sold with this idea of race and race does not exist it's a an attribute no different than eye color no different than hair color um, the thing that has separated us uh, has been culture in the sense that we have different experiences because of our geographical locations in the world yes. and how we're shaped by our lands and the, the stories and um, the way that we see the world and interact with the, the, uh, the non-physical, metaphysical realm of the world. These are things that are differences, different perspectives, not one better than the other. Um, but, and language is a big barrier. And if there's one particular thing perhaps that has come good out of colonialism, it would be the fact that we can speak to each other. Yes. And we can share stories and understand. So now we're at a place where we, we can he hear each other. And maybe the things that are being said are not wanting to be heard because they're hard truths. And it's this idea that this is where it's time to sit in that. And in the mindfulness path, when we're faced with our own internal hard truths, we sit with that and we listen. I was gonna say, it's about really listening now. We listen and we don't fight it. We accept it as it is. We don't try to push it away or we don't try to change it. We don't try to do anything to it. It's here, we see it in its completeness and we accept that and we sit with that. And, and then we notice how that makes us feel. And it's in that uncomfortable feeling and sometimes a lot of pain yes. that transformation takes place. Because until you feel it, and this is the other piece, right? Is that up until now, we have been told emotions get in the way. Mm -hmm. In an in a, uh, economy that favors um, uh, success and, and domination and competition, um, you can't see your competitors as humans. There's a lot of othering going on, right? Yes. It's about, you know, this seek and destroy. Yes. Um, and so that's what we are, we're being asked, we're starting to say we need to come to the heart. Mm -hmm. We need to start feeling and stop running away from all the feelings. And we need to know our past. We have to be educated by our past, our own individual past and the collective past and we need to see the truth not how we want to see the past yes and every single human being has a past that there's some things on there we have all have blood on our hands on yeah. some some aspect of our lives and we have to sit with that and mm. it's the feelings that come from sitting with the hard truths that then drive us to right action yes and so we're being asked to do the right thing right now in all aspects from our own individual lives, to say the things that needed to be said, to um, forgive where you needed to forgive, to let go what needs to be let go, to honor what needs to be honored as it is, to put up boundaries, healthy boundaries that yeah. respect both people. Um, that's on an individual level and on a collective level where we can say, you know, um, I've done some wrong and, and start seeing each other as brothers and sisters, as cousins, yes. aunties, uncles, because we are all related. Yeah. We all came from the same same, same uh, continent. We That's came right. from Africa. Humankind comes from Africa. 
and um, I'm a yeah. big fan of Spencer Wells's work, which is the Genome Center, or sorry, the, the Human Genome Project, yeah. and, and he follows the DNA uh, markers of humans, the humanity's story, and he's the one who says that race does not exist, and he's got the scientific proof. I just don't know if that message is getting out there. I don't think it is yet. Right. We'll put that word in. I'd like to think that it will. Yeah. There's enough voices and enough people such as you leading the way. I don't, again, not pressuring, but it's when people listen to you that it, I mean, I'm sitting here listening to you thinking, because I try to be such a good person in this world, but then I listen to you and I think, yeah, if I look deep, I know that there's been instances where maybe I've hurt someone totally unintentionally. Yeah. But that does not make me a bad person. No, it's but I have to own that in order to move forward. And I think the more people that hear that message and really embrace it and create change, I mean, it's about creating change and being meaningful in that right. as well. Right. And and like you said, looking back and seeing things as they are, mm -hmm. so that you can move forward in a better direction. That's right. Right. Because you you have to you have to educate yourself and you have to learn from those mistakes but if you're not willing to see them then you'll keep creating them and um, there's a deep part of your awareness that knows yeah that knows the difference between right and wrong yes and it's 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 the one that holds you accountable and makes you feel Ugh. Yeah. Um, but it's also the thing that gets eroded when you ignore it that's right and that sense of self and who you are um, starts to diminish when you go against that that's within you yeah and I think that's, I think many people probably are pushing against what's deep inside. And like you say, with materialism and video games and things like that, I'm not saying any of it is wrong, but I think we, we're using a lot of things to, if you want to use the term numbing, um, just to keep our minds busy on fun yeah. and not really think about the deep stuff. And COVID now, I agree with you, it, it certainly has given me the opportunity to do so much more thinking and learning and listening and reevaluating and in such a massive way if there is something that good that comes from a situation like this which i know so many people are struggling with and yeah. i i i don't take that lightly at all but that's more reason to that's right do better because those people would want you to is that's honoring right. those lives that have been lost too it's that's understanding right. that these are our, our human family members who have suffered don't let that suffering be in vain yes you're right you know that's that's what it comes down to that's right so what do you hope your next steps are with healing humanity um, I first would like to really get into uh, I, first of all I want to start collecting people okay I'm yeah. in I'm I want in. to start collecting people <laughs> who really who really see human family um, as it is that we are human family and are willing to take the path to make that a realization yes. so that we're living from that place of I look at you and I'm like your long lost sister or long lost cousin that I that I can see that connection yeah. and I feel it it's not just a, an idealization of it it's, it's an actual living from that place yes. so I'm collecting people who are interested in that that vision of okay. making this happen it's not some far off thing it's like oh wouldn't that be nice no no we're Let's gonna start it. living as right now we're gonna start living as it is right now and then we're also going to be willing to open up and have those hard discussions about the fights we've been having in our human family yeah oh I, absolutely so if people want to become part of your collection yes. can they just I'll be giving all of your information at the end of this can they just reach out to you sure so right now it's still really new I'm, yes. I'm, I'm evolving and trying to figure out what this is going to finally look like but I'm collecting people at okay. my Prana Mama platform okay Wonderful. so certainly the Facebook um, I have a discussion book uh, discussion group on Facebook called Prana Mama's food for thought oh discussion wonderful. group. Okay. and so um, people can come on there and basically I'm taking the same um, teaching tools that were used by Gandhi and Martin Luther King okay. Jr., um, even uh, Mandela, um, uh, even like women's rights movements, I mean, because all this was all tied together, and I'm sharing um, from that Eastern perspective, and I'm, I'm also asking questions of mm -hmm. self-inquiry in for, for everyone to dig in with themselves, and then how do we apply that into the outer world, Okay. and um, also create community around that. Um, 
and this is another big this is this is the we all have medicine yes and I believe women are are going to be an important role in this piece because relationship is important heart and emotions is who we are it's our world we navigate it um, and so we get to step into who we are and get to show up in the world as we are and lead from that place, which I think is a very exciting place. Can I wear sparkles? You can wear do all it? kinds of okay. sparkles. You can do whatever you want, yes. Well, yes. I had 10 questions for you, but I'm gonna ask you one, and I think I know the answer to it. I find it very interesting that we zipped this up today <laughs> so that you know we, we wouldn't get rained on and there was no wind. Right. And then the whole time yeah. the, the uh, they've been blowing in and out, but it just adds to it all does. of this. It does, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, First of all, before I ask you the question, I so want to thank you for, honestly for doing this because I, I've just been listening and listening and listening and my head's just inside, I'm thinking, um, and that's what you do for people. Well, you do so much for people, but that's what you do is you talk, it's like wisdom, and then you get people thinking, and from that thinking, I do believe comes doing, which is really important. Yep. I think I know the answer to this question. You can't say me. Yeah. Um, Anyone in history, anyone in the world, you are going to be able to sit down with them and have a conversation. Who would I that might be? I surprise you. Actually. Oh, okay. So it is yeah. me. <laughs> <laughs> actually, it would be Jesus. Oh, wow. It I would be Jesus. Okay. Yes, because <gasps> I would like to know how he feels about what has been done in his name. Oh, wow. That yeah. is. Oh my goodness! Yeah, I want to know what a great how, question. how he would feel about what has been done in his name. Oh my goodness! And if we got the teaching right, yeah. so I'm I would like to have his say. What a great answer! Yeah. Okay, yeah, you did surprise me there. Yeah, you did surprise me because we were speaking about people earlier, and you mentioned one name, and I'm like, she's going to mention him. Yeah, but uh, yeah, I'd like wonderful. to know who he would truly praise yeah. and who he would condemn. My goodness. Well, you always yeah. surprise me, but in such a great way. <laughs> um, but anyway, anyone that wants to get in touch with Chantel, I am going to be putting all of her information. Uh, I will let you know exactly where it goes at the end of this. And uh, reach out to her. She, You can tell just from this small video the wisdom that she has to offer. And I do think she's a game changer for our world, or our community at least, without putting the pressure on her. My family. So your family, <laughs> that's right, the family, the dog. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so thank you from thank the bottom you. of my heart and a big virtual hug. Thank you for tuning in today. Please subscribe if you haven't. Please share this with all that you know. This channel is for essentially women 40 plus because I do think we we learn so much after 40 and but at the same time it's for the women that are younger to perhaps get some answers as well this is for the men who love them you can hear what we have to talk about as well i think everyone can learn and grow from this so please share and go and have a wonderful day and live sweat sparkle. that's it thank you so much for joining me today as we talked to Chantel, who every time i'm around that woman i'm just immersed in in wisdom and just thought about what she brings up. Um, she's very, very wise, and I think if anyone can help her community, her world, it's it's gonna be somebody like her, and a lot of people like her are in this world to do that. Um, if you want to join in and be part of her community, like she mentioned, I will be putting all of her information below for you to get a hold of her. She is Prana Mama on Instagram, P-R-A-N-A, -A, Mama. So check her out before I actually get around to putting the information below, but it will be very quickly. And join me next week, because next week I'm excited. I put a survey out recently with four questions for women, and they were based on what you wish you had known or what you have learned with life on four different key areas of living. Next week, it's actually gonna be about motherhood. And this is for anyone, whether you're a mother, whether you're not, whether you're a grandmother, whether you're currently a mother but have older children, or whether you're yet to be a mother. Because I feel the wisdom that we and the lessons that we older mothers have actually gained is a beautiful thing 
to hand off to younger people that are going to be or are young new parents but actually could really do with the the words of wisdom i really believe in bringing communities together and, and helping each other that way so i must admit i was really tickled by all of the responses that i got from the people in this survey so i will be reading their responses and then having a little conversation around each of them so stay tuned because it might be your response that i use and uh, in the meantime, I hope you have a wonderful rest of the week. And I hope that you, as always, live, sweat, don't forget to sparkle.